Hey guys, back again. Gonna make us a three-stage rocket tonight. We, uh, I'm gonna move down to some little rockets. We're gonna do some five eighths or eight ounce rockets. I've got a small, like extended Sally whistle spindle I'm fooling with. <clears throat> I'm gonna use Benny whistle on it, and then I'm gonna put a little clay nozzle on that to give it a little extra power. And they make a nice little pusher motor. I can keep it short and make a small three-stage rocket pretty quick. Uh, so here we go. We'll wax our little baby spindle. Put our little. I just cut a standard, a standard six and a quarter. 8 ounce motor in half. And here's how you use standard supports with that. You just take that motor, you just cut in half, put it right back together in there. And if you get them wallered good, the rammers will still slide right in there. And that's how you can make a shorter motor with long tooling. I know I've been fooling with big motors for quite some time, but I kind of want to fool with these small ones a little and see how they work for all kinds of different testing and making fun little stuff that doesn't make a bunch of noise. So here we go. I already set the pressure on my press, so I was ready to go for there. I guess we can check it to make sure we're where we want to be. I got my pressure gauge. Let's just check. That seems just fine. I've got my handle. I can just adjust the pressure by turning the handle. That makes it real handy for quick and easy pressure adjustments. We got this little clay nozzle I just put in. Now we're going to the whistle fuel. I'm pressing these about 8,000 8, PSI. I try not to overpress stuff unless I find it has to have that extra pressure. A lot of people like to be at 9,000. I say if you need that to make your rocket work, go ahead and shove it up to 9,000 without thinking about it. But, if you don't need it, why press it quite that hard? I granulate the fuel with wax like I usually do. It makes it nice and not sticky. It falls right back out of the rammers. I'm above the, now that I'm above the line, I'm above the spindle, I'm going to switch over and give it a little hit with that, making sure not to pass, the, no pass line. Then we'll keep going. I'm going to make that my lift motor. That's about a little over 3 8 probably on top of that spindle. And we'll make that motor number one. That'll just give it a quick lift and keep it going straight up when it changes to the next motor. The one thing you don't want a staged motor to do is turn over at all and start going horizontal. 
Nice little motor, quick and easy, comes right off. Bam, done. Uh, wax spindle again. And I am going to do this start to finish. We're going to make these three motors, put them together, and walk outside and shoot it. Got a little shim in there. These supports were tubes come in a little smaller than the supports were made for the last set of tubes. So you could put a little paper tape in there, take up that extra room. I could walk over there and cut that support down, but then it never fit a different size tube, and it would have taken me time, and I wanted to make a rocket. All right, we better put the clay in first. And I just use regular cat litter. I don't chomp it up, grind it, nothing. Just cheap dollar store cat litter. Some people like Dr. Elsie's or whatever. I just grab plain old cat litter. I'm going for under a quarter inch of nozzle. That's enough to hold it together, be nice and solid. Oh, I'm gonna start fooling with this 5 8 motor size some more. I'm gonna start making some end burners. It's a good size motor that you can make Gerandola motors. If you do a stack of these rather than bigger motors, if you have a problem with one motor, the Gerandola doesn't feel it, and you have a better chance of success, which is always good. So we're going to delve into fooling with 5 8 for a while. I'll go ahead and make some strobes, maybe some long-winded screamers, some Gerandola motors. That's what's got me excited right now, so that's where I'm headed. I'm kind of excited about trying this motor on a Gerandola itself. I can run a little longer burn time on it. Get a decent amount of thrust. Run a couple of these, put a couple of whistles on the side of it. Have a nice screaming Gerandola. So I got past there, now I'm gonna hit that, what's left of that increment with the other flat rammer. I like doing that above the spindle right there just to make sure it gets nice and solid. I'm going to run a freckle more delay on number two. Hopefully once it's in the air it'll still be going nice and straight. It's running about close to three quarters of an inch, probably. I'll try to do the same thing on the third stage. We'll see how that turns out. We'll run the longest delay on the third stage, however it does turn out. Now, if the spindle comes out first, you'll have to grab a hammer. We don't need that one. And you got to kind of tap on this a little bit. And you don't have to tap hard to get that off of there. It doesn't take much to pop those loose like that. Your bigger motors, you have to tap a little harder. Usually you're doing it from the top of the motor, not the nozzle end. So you got a little more delay in that one. You'll still notice I never take the supports all the way apart. I just leave them just like that. Just loosen the bolts up, 
slap them together. And if something about what you're using comes apart harder, or something's acting up and way more difficult, you need to call me and we'll figure out what's going on and how to make it easy, because it really should be this easy to make all your motors. If you're running into issues where the rammers are getting stuck, or the spindle's getting stuck, there's a, a cause to that. It's not just how it is. The clay grabs us, but the rammer a little. But other than that, most of these will come out without even using the puller. Still doing pretty good in there. A little clay on that one. This last motor, I'm going to try to make it show up a little better. We're going to get to the top of the spindle. We're going to add a little titanium to this fuel and see if we can have this little spark trail in the sky. This is going to be, this will put us over the top. I'm going to dump that in, grab a little, very little. Not close to over the top anyway. I do not want to put the titanium back in my fuel bucket. So if I caught some in there, we'll just keep that, throw it out, or use it for the delay next time. Then we're going to throw a little more tie in that. That one we're going over the top. Here we go. Now we'll be able to see what we'll see that last rocket good. A little more hit. That should put us right there. I did it. I'll have to make that whole mix of titanium now. I dumped it in there. That's all right. We're going to use it here in a minute for reports anyway. pretty close to the top so that is our going to be our top motor I'm going to make a little baby report to go on top of it so let's see what do we need for a baby report we need a piece of match I poked a hole through there let's see if we can get the match through there that's probably way more than enough That'll work. I got a little hot glue plugged in. Yes, you can use regular glue and wait for it to dry. 
That's what a lot of people rather do, but to be expedient, hot glue is pretty quick. All right, now we're going to put a little whistle in this rascal. We're not trying to make a big boom here. We're just trying to see our rocket at the end. We're going to put a hefty amount of titanium in there. So hopefully we'll be able to see that. sound like a baby way up there. Now I can glue that right to the top of that motor, which is what we'll do. That match is going to push right against that bulkhead of whistle and that'll light. Makes a nice, solid, lightweight header for that. A little gum tape. tape around that, fold over. Alright, now we get to put these motors together. And they're easily put together, especially this small of a size. Since I can just poke this match. I'll just fold my match over, poke it, chop it off, and that'll go right up against the, the bulkhead of the second stage. And then we just use one piece of masking tape for this. Nothing special, nothing extra. Just one little piece of tape. Now this motor, same thing happens. Same thing, it'll just get bent over and pushed up against the bulkhead of the next one. And that masking tape just comes right off when it lights that next motor. Now we're going to stick them up. We don't need that. We don't need that. We got some sticks here. Let's see, that one's kind of ugly. There we go. We'll just cut a little angle on the top. They're all pretty straight. Keeps the wind from pushing on the top edge of that stick. I'm not sure it matters a whole lot with this little deal, especially since we're running a flat nosed rocket. We'll start at the bottom motor, run a little bead of glue. Just 
check and make sure that's somewhat straight. Then we'll run a piece of tape, or we can use, we don't have to use masking tape. We have this fancy tape. Run a little piece of gum tape around there, kind of hold it. A little extra protection, pull that tight. And then turn that motor about a third, and we'll run run the next motor. About right there. And I'm just going to run one stick per motor on these little ones. When I do the bigger rockets, I do run two sticks per motor. And that holds, like holds the, this stick, catches it on there and it keeps it from tilting. These little motors seem pretty stout with just that little piece of tape. When you get to the bigger ones, it does take more to hold them. Those are pretty well, sticks are pretty even. I'm pretty happy with that solid little rocket and diffuse it. I'm just going to take a piece of my match and fold it over. This is the homemade stuff. And just shove it up in there. Just like I did the other ones. And then just get a little baby piece of tape. Kind of hold it right there so it doesn't fall out when we walk outside. That's it. We're going to go light this thing and see what happens. <laughs> 